for humans, I'm Mr. King. Annyeong! So now, let's go to this May June 2021, paper 62. Let's go! Here you see, namings of apparatus. So, the one labeled A over here, it is stirring rod. Or you can also write grass rod also can. Yeah. So B is conical flask. Name the process in step three. See, step three very obvious. We know this is an example of filtration. The general name for solid in step three is residue. And then what is the solution obtained called? Remember, okay, how after filtration, the solid they will get separated is called residue, and the liquid that obtained. It is called filtrate. Okay, then next, you see, two more steps, step 4 and step 5, are needed in order to obtain a pure sample of barium sulfate. So step what is done in each step 4 and 5 and identify the substance removed from the barium sulfate. So you see, to obtain a pure sample of barium sulfate, which is the residue. So what do we need to do to the residue? To obtain a pure residue. Okay, remember, you see, every single time after filtration is carried out, next step it is always followed by rinse with distilled water. Yeah, why? This is to remove the soluble impurities on the residue. So in this case, which one is the soluble impurities? What is the substance removed? Again, we have to remove the excess sodium chlorine. Okay, huh? sodium chloride, which is the filtrate. Okay, huh? because some filtrate, isn't it? They will stay on the surface of the barium sulfate. Uh, so we have to remove sodium chloride okay then step five okay followed by okay drying with filter paper okay it is to remove the water remember you see previous step we rinse with this still water what? okay huh? so now if you to dry it okay we remove the water on the surface that's it okay and then next one okay going with this okay to investigate the volumes of gas, okay, when sodium carbonate reacts with acid, okay, given with this drawing, okay, and all the experimental methods, okay, huh, tabulations of data. So, what are the volumes of acid used? Okay, so volumes of acid used, you see, they are all given already. See, 16, 14, 12, 10, and 6 cm cubed. Again, so 16, 14, 12, and 10, and 6 cm cube. And then what is the volumes of gas produced? So you see, how do we read this? You see, from top to bottom, you see the volume increases. So you see 50, 51, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 56. Okay, next one, 49, 44, 37, and 26. So you see, huh? write a suitable skill on the y-axis and plot the result. Okay, so which eventually, okay, huh? so this is how it looks like. Okay, and draw a straight line of battery. Remember, you see, when it comes into the drawings or tabulations of gra uh, graph, okay, remember, always use a minimum 50 or 60% of the graph given to you. Okay, huh? Try to use as, I mean, as much as possible. Okay, so you see the skill gives so the skill on the y-axis can be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. Okay, so which eventually okay, you will get something like this. Okay, with the best fit line. Okay, you have to join as much point as possible. Okay, then see deduce the volumes of gas that will be collected if 7 cm cubes of acid was used. So okay, so in your graph, isn't you have to show how do you get a result? Okay, so at 7. We have to draw dotted line and dotted line from seven. 
So eventually it is 29. Alright. Okay, then use this equation and your answer in C1. Calculate the volumes of gas made per cm cubes of the acid. So if volumes of gas collected is 29. Uh, 29. Divide by volumes of acid. Okay, volumes of acid it is 7. So which eventually will get about 4.14. Okay, so next one. Okay, see the bung was removed and then replaced immediately okay, after the sodium carbonate was added. So why the bung must be replaced immediately after the sodium carbon is added? Why? Yeah, you see, this experiment is about the volumes of gas collector, isn't it? So you see, imagine if you remove the bung and then you close the bung again, okay? So that might be probability that, uh, that the gas will escape, okay? So which eventually it will affect okay, the volumes of gas collected. So, uh, so okay, why? Okay, huh? so this is to prevent the gas from escaping. So how the expert or uh, how the apparatus could be altered so that the bunk does not have to be removed. You may draw a diagram to explain your answer. So what you can do, okay, so what you can do is you can put a glass divider in the middle. Okay, so you can put a divider okay, to prevent the solution from reacting together. Okay, huh? so when you want to start the reaction, you just take the flask. Okay, so you can say, see, okay, use a divided flask. Okay, or use glass divider. Okay, either one will do. And then, okay, keep flask. To start reaction. Okay, so which eventually is an AK it looks something like this. Oh yeah, my drawing will be off. Yes. So that's a glass divider. Okay, to separate both the solution from one another. So okay, uh okay, it looks something like this. Okay, so this is glass divider. Okay, yeah, it will look something like this. Okay, okay, then okay, what is the advantage of using a burette rather than a measuring cylinder? Okay, uh, it is more accurate. Okay, then you see, experiment 1 to find the sodium carbonate was in excess. Sketch on the grid of the graph, okay, you would expect if all the experiments were repeated using acid with half the concentration. See, with half the concentration, what happened? You see, when the, see, we know that, see, when the concentration, see, see, uh, formula what? N equals to CV. Given the volume stay constant, so what happens if the concentration decreases by half? The numbers of moles will also get decreased by half, isn't it? So you see, when the moles of the acid get decreased by half, so which means the moles of the gas produced will also get decreased by half. So which eventually the volumes of the gas produced will also get decreased by half. Okay, so when you plot the graph, isn't it? Okay, huh? it should be okay. The volume produced, right? It has to be half. See, initially, another one it is uh, it, it was zero. Okay, ah, yeah. Okay, wait. Okay, 26, so you will get 13. Yes, 13 is supposed to be here. Yes, roughly zero. Okay, you get yeah, something like this. Okay, and then label F. Yeah, okay, so which means all the volume is in a Q to decrease by two. Yeah, sorry, sorry, decrease by half. Okay, divide by two. 
All right, okay, and then ah, next one identifications of ions and gases. See, sodium hydroxide added. Okay, see why precipitate form and it did not dissolve in excess. You see, it remains insoluble in excess. So, from here, you know that it is calcium. Okay, and then you see it's tested with silver. Okay, remember, whenever you see silver, 100% they are testing for halide. It forms yellow precipitate, indicates the presence of iodide ions. Okay, then about 10 cm of aqueous hydrogen peroxide was added. The gas produced was tested. You see, the gas produced, it relates a glowing spleen. It produces oxygen gas. Then yeah, only oxygen can rely a glowing spleen. So what is the gas produced in test 3? Okay, so from here, you know that it is oxygen gas. Yeah, and then identify G based on test 1 and test 2. So it is calcium iodide. Alright. Okay, next one. See, given here, hydrated copper 2 sulfate. So it is hydrated. So next you see C. So what is the observation when it is heated using a Bunsen burner? So what happens? You see, hydrated, isn't it? Okay, so condensation will take place. Okay, and what else? Two marks what? So you see, from hydrated it becomes anhydrous copper 2 sulfate. What is the color for anhydrous copper 2 sulfate? Again, it is white in color. So solid turns white. Yeah, and then next one, flame test, there's copper. So it is blue green in color. Remember, it has to be blue green. Okay, do not just write blue or green in color. It has to be blue green in color. Okay, next one. See, add with ammonia, and then in excess. You see, we are not testing for with copper, isn't it? So the very first observation. Okay, ha, huh? blue precipitate is formed. And then it will get dissolved in excess. And dissolve in excess to form dark blue solution. That's it. Three marks. Okay. And then you see the barrier. Remember, whenever you see the word barrier, 100% they are testing for sulfate. Is there any sulfate? Yes, that is. So it produces barium sulfate with the observations of white precipitate is formed. That's it. Alright. Yeah, so this is how it looks like. Okay, then next one. See, planning experiment part. See, given here, the minerals epsomite contains hydrated magnesium sulfate. When it is heated strongly, it loses water and eventually becomes anhydrous compound. So plan an experiment to find the percentage, is it percentage by mass of water in the sample. Okay, and how you would calculate the percentage by mass. So I can do over here. Okay, ah, so in this case, okay, we have to calculate the percentage by mass of water. Okay, so the very first member is what is the constant variables? We need to know what is the initial mass. Okay, so the very first step, okay, ha, measure and record the mass of the samples of epsomite using measuring balance okay and then next you see next we have to carry out heating is it remember you see for heating of solid okay uh, the container that we use remember it has to be crucible okay do not use beaker because beaker cannot withstand heat yeah, you need to use a proper or appropriate app uh, apparatus in the experiment. Okay, then next one, okay, I'll place the sample into a 
possible. All right, okay, then followed by heating, okay, ha. Huh? It is heated. Okay, sorry, okay, ha. Huh? Everything active form. Okay, then heat the crucible with Bunsen burner. After heating, okay, then uh, we wait the sample. Heat and we wait until a constant mass is obtained. Why? Because as long as the mass stops decreasing, it means that there's no more water molecule or water compound uh, in the sample. Okay, and then we take, so how do we look for the mass of water? Okay, we take the initial mass minus the uh, final mass. Okay, huh. so the mass of water can be calculated by uh, initial mass minus final mass. And then you are asked to show how you would calculate the percentage by mass of water, isn't it? So how do you? So you can just say, okay, then uh, percentage by mass of water in this sample can be calculated by uh, then you can just give a formula okay huh? percentage of water equals okay, the mass of water divided by the Initial mass multiply hundred percent. That's it. All right. So this is how it looks like. Okay, for the answer of this planning experiment part. All right. Hmm. So hope this is helpful for you guys. If not, if there's any questions, okay, you guys can always comment below, and I will answer you guys. All right. Thanks. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. See you again. Bye.